Hello, everyone. Today, we are going to be talking about applying properties of rational exponents. So after this video, you will be able to simplify expressions involving rational exponents. Now, in order to do that, we want to be using only positive exponents. So let's recall of some of the properties of exponents. When we had multiplication, we said that we would add our exponents. Now, there is no exponent here, so that means that there is an exponent equal to 1. So when you multiply the, ba the base of 5 to the first power times 5 to the second power, you're going to add those exponents, giving you 5 to the third power. When we have division, we said we would subtract the exponents. Now, 4 minus 7 will give an exponent of negative 3. So that means that the base A belongs in the denominator. So the response is 1 over A to the third power. Power to a power, we are going to multiply 2 times negative 3. That is an exponent of negative 6. That means the base Z needs to go into the denominator. So the response will be 1 over z to the 6th power. Now we have a base of 3x over 4 raised to the power of 2. This means that this exponent of 2 corresponds to the 3, as well to the x, as well as to the 4. So we're going to square the 3, giving us 9. x squared, all we can do is write it in the numerator, and then 4 squared is 16 and we leave that in the denominator there's nothing else for us to simplify here so that is the final answer now let's apply these properties to rational exponents so product of powers if we have x to the half power times x to the three half powers we're going to add those exponents leaving us with x to the four half power and we can simplify four over two so our final answer is x squared now, power of a power, we have 5 halves raised to the 6th power. That becomes 5 to the 6th half power. We can simplify that, giving us 5 to the 3rd. Well, 5 to the 3rd is, just, is simply 5 times 5 times 5, which is 125. Power of a product. We have 7x raised to the 4 third power. So we need to distribute the 4 thirds to the 7 and the x. And there's nothing else for us to do other than expand that. So our final response is 7 to the 4 thirds times x to the 4 thirds. Now, when we have a negative exponent, we need to make sure that the base that we're raising that exponent to is not equal to zero. So a could never be equal to zero because then we go into the trouble of dividing by zero, which is undefined. So let's take a look. We have four raised to the negative half power. That means that four needs to go down to the denominator and we're going to be taking the square root and that is going to be equal to one half. When we have zero exponents, as long as the base is not zero, we are going to get one. So seven to the zero power is one. X to the zero power is one. One times one is still one. Quotient of powers. So for the quotient of powers, we're going to subtract those exponents. Okay, so if we had four X to the three quarters divided by four X to the quarter, our base is 4x. We're going to subtract the exponents. So 3 quarters minus 1 quarter is equal to 2 fourths. And we can simplify 2 fourths, and that gives us 1 half. So when we take the square root of 4, we get 2, and then x to the half power. All right, so now let's look at power of a quotient. So we have a over b raised to the power of m. So we need to look at an example so that you can see how that applies here. So if we have 4x over 36 to the half power, you can either simplify the 4 and the 36 at this point, or you can just distribute the half power to each value inside of the parentheses. 
So we're going to have 4x raised to the half power over 36 to the half power. When you take the square root of 4, you get 2. x to the half power is just the square root of x. And square root of 36 is 6. At this point, you can simplify the 2 and the 6, giving you 1 over 3, which is just square root of x over 3, because we still had to multiply that square root of x. Let's look at product property. So if we had the nth root of a times b, that means that we can just take the nth root of each product separately. So let's take a look here. If we had the cubic root of 48, that is not a number that has a, cub a cubic root, but the product of eight and six, we know because we've done this several times, the cubic root of eight is going to be two. And then we can just separate them, giving us with, and how about I just, move that out of the way so you can see we get two times the cubic root of six remember that we must put that index of three because we're taking the cubic root for the quotient property let's see now make sure that your base is not zero because otherwise you end up with an undefined um, value so if we had the cubic root of eight over 64 well you can simplify eight and 64 here which would give you one eighth or you can just go ahead and take, um, well, looks like I did that. I simplified the eight and the 64 here, and you take the cubic root of one and the cubic root of eight separately, giving you one half. Here's the other example of where I just took the cubic root of eight, so the numerator, and the cubic root of 64, the denominator, giving us 2 over the cubic root of 8 times 8. Well, the cubic root of 8 and 8 is 2. So 2 over 2 times 2 is equal to 1 half. I hope that helps you in uh, simplifying radicals.